On this week in Iowa, a top agency official suddenly resigns. We speak to a Republican lawmaker about what it means. Then former Governor Tom Vilsack is talking about tariffs in the USMCA. Plus, Eddie Morrow wants Senator Joni Ernst's job. We speak to him about what sets him apart. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. I'm Sabrina Ahmed. A shock to many this week, Jerry Foxhoven is out of a job. He turned in his resignation this week as head of the Department of Human Services. Governor Reynolds asked for his resignation Monday, saying she wanted to take the department in a different direction. Foxhoven's absence comes as a new managed care company is expected to come into the state in less than two weeks. Iowa Total Care is expected to begin giving thousands of Iowans Medicaid services on July 1st. This week, the company says it signed contracts with four of the state's largest health care providers, but there are still a lot of unknowns, such as how the new company's transition into the state is going and how many Iowans are signed up for their Medicaid services. The decision to ask Foxhoven to step down came as a surprise to a lot of folks in the Capitol, especially lawmakers from both sides of the aisle. We will speak to one of those lawmakers in just a few minutes. Four years ago, then-candidate Donald Trump launched his presidential campaign for the Republican Party as he came down that escalator at Trump Tower. He came to an audience that didn't really know what to expect. This week, Mr. Trump officially launched his re-election campaign for 2020. Thousands of people waited to, for, to watch President Trump speak. Some camped out for days to get into the Amway Center. President Trump's 2020 campaign launch speech was similar to his other rallies. He spoke about Hillary Clinton and immigration. We need to take a short break, but coming up next, we hear from a Republican lawmaker who's looking for more answers behind Jerry Foxhoven's departure. His interview in two minutes. We're Iowa's most accurate means tracking the storm days in advance. Tuesday, severe weather likely with hail, wind, flash flooding, and even tornadoes possible. Pinpointing the path and timing on all screens. If you're wondering if you should hit the roads or not, wait this out until 7.45, 8 o'clock at the earliest. Tracking the storm, warning you of potential threats. Four semis all rolled over on I-80 going west. Crews had to shut down parts of the interstate. At Local 5, being We're Iowa's most accurate means keeping you ahead of the storm. Iowa summers are perfect for outdoor family fun, and the Des Moines area has a wealth of events and activities that can keep the most active families busy from morning till night. Make plans today to visit Des Moines, and be sure to include a visit to Adventureland Resort, including Adventureland Park, Adventure Bay Water Park, and Adventureland Inn. Come share the fun with family and friends, and make the memories of a lifetime this summer at Adventureland. Attention. If you currently do not get health insurance through your employer, or if you do not have health insurance, or if you just got divorced or married, had a baby, moved, or lost your health insurance coverage, listen closely. You are eligible for a new health care plan using Health Insurance America. A family of four can make up to $97,000 a year and still qualify for a new health care plan. Get coverage for doctor visits, prescriptions, hospital, dental, and vision for as little as $25 a week with co-pays as low as zero dollars. Health insurance rates have nearly doubled in the last three years. Stop paying the rising cost of traditional major medical and learn how Health Insurance America is saving people thousands of dollars a year on their health care plans. Don't waste hours on the phone or on a government website. Talk to a live health care consultant right now. Call 1-800-921-0724. That's 1-800-921-0724. 1-800-921-0724. From the capital city, you're watching This Week in Iowa with Sabrina Ahmed. Getting to the heart of what's happening in Iowa politics. I appreciate uh, Jerry stepping in at a really tough time and helping with the transition. I appreciate that a lot. I've just made the decision to go a different direction. And um, like I said, I've been reshaping my team. I'm excited about the new people that we're bringing on. I've made some significant uh, announcements in the last week and look forward to making some more moving forward. And that was Governor Kim Reynolds speaking about the departure of former DHS Director Jerry Foxhoven. She asked him to step down from his post. So we're joined now by State Senator Brad Zahn, a Republican from Central Iowa, talking about Jerry Foxhoven's resignation from the department. Senator Zahn, thank you so much for being here. Tell us, what was your reaction when 
he stepped down. And did you have any idea that was going to happen? Well, first of all, I did not have any idea. I don't have any inside information. Uh, I consider Jerry Fox uh, a very good friend of mine. Um, I thought he did an outstanding job as our director. Uh, that is probably the worst job in the state of Iowa. Uh, had a lot of interaction with him, with constituents, and seemed like there was always common sense. We've had some challenges with the MCOs. He was trying to fix that. Uh, but on the good side, uh, I know the, the director that's going to be replacing him, uh, Mr. Claybaugh, is really qualified. He was the director of the uh, Iowa Department of Public Health. So uh, it's not down, down, uh, but certainly uh, I think a lot of us have questions. and. Uh, I'm sure that the answers will come out, and I'm excited to hear that there might be some changes, hopefully some positive changes, uh, in regards to some of the things that are going on, uh, you know, through the Department of Human Services. Do you think that the reason he was asked to resign is because the negotiations with all of these managed care companies and it moving in and out of our state? Well, I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I speculate that, you know, there's something going on. Um, I know that it has been challenging with the MCOs. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been very disappointed uh, when we went to MCOs, uh, but it's reality now, and my job as a state senator to my constituent is try to make the best of the environment that's there. Uh, and I know that there's a new player that's going to that's going to be getting into the into the field. But bottom line for me is the people of Iowa. They're dependent on these services right. and making sure that not only they are taken care of but the providers have it. And I know that there's been some improvement, but we got a long ways to go. Now, there's, this is awful abrupt timing, given that Iowa Total Care is supposed to start delivering their services July 1. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does a department completely change their leadership at the same time that they have such a massive undertaking? Well, I mean, I, obviously there's a change in that, uh, which there's also going to be a change in leadership. Uh, and like I said, I have a lot of confidence that Governor Reynolds made a good decision in regards to who she asked to replace. Gerd used to be on the Johnson City Council. Mm -hmm. I've worked with him on other issues. Uh, he's very qualified, and so I'm excited from that standpoint. But there's probably no one in the state of Iowa that has more passion for children especially than what Jerry did. And that's the disappointing part. Um, he's got a great past and been involved with the Drake Law Center in, in, in regards to that. And I just consider him a friend and, and I'm sure. Uh, and really, with his reaction, which has been really little um, since this has happened, just shows me what type of person he is. Because I have had contact with mm -hmm. him. And he's like, listen, it's time to move on. And uh, I, you know, I'm sure that if he's ever asked to do anything to help out, he would probably be there in regards to the transition to the new uh, the new health care company but you did think he was doing a fine job I thought he did a great job and uh, you know what I respect about him is that he didn't always agree and it seemed to me like he was always telling it the way it was and maybe sometimes that wasn't the information that the administration wanted to hear uh, so I respect him for that DHS is also in charge of the children's mental health system mm -hmm. which yep. is supposed to be up and running mm -hmm. July 1 that's mm -hmm. two major deadlines mm -hmm. do you think everything can still go uh, as planned without Director Foxhoven at well, the helm? Well, if it doesn't, I'm going to be very disappointed as well as all of us in the legislature. I assume that there is a plan and that that will move forward uh, with this change. There's been talk of a nationwide search for a permanent director of DHS. Of course, um, Mr. Claba will be uh, out an interim basis. Right. Um, do you believe that a nationwide search is the way to go? I absolutely. I want us to find the best, most qualified person uh, in whoever's out there, and it might be uh, the interim director, uh, but I certainly want them to get the best person. And does it worry you to know that there, he, Garrett Claba is now in charge of two departments, as well as Debbie Durham is in charge of two departments, and we have other departments that don't have anyone at the helm, like DNR. Okay. D well, I can tell you this, in regards to DNR, mm -hmm. I've talked to the interim director. Yeah. Uh, it's business as usual. Okay. They're doing what they need to do. I have the utmost confidence that Governor Reynolds knows what she's doing, and she will find the best people to fill all these positions. 
What's your message to Iowans as they hear that maybe people have been really upset about this change and there's been kind of a lot of calling out of different people throughout this week? Well, I don't think it does any good and it's not creative to, you know, to do this name calling yeah. that's going on, but let's, let's make a, the best out of this situation. Uh, at this point, um, you know, obviously Jerry is gone, Gerd is in, and I support what he's doing. Um, I would just tell all Iowans that if you are having some problems with this transition, including myself, um, contact me because usually when a legislator gets involved, we contact whoever the provider is uh, and get involved and usually we're somewhat successful right. in solving these problems. And that includes providers not getting paid. Um, but I do know this, that uh, Jerry did a great job of making sure that the providers were getting paid a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've done some legislation in regards to that. So there was a deadline on how much they, time period they had to pay their bills. So, um, so I don't think it's the end of the world, but I'm disappointed because I just know the passion that uh, Jerry had. Senator Bradzon, yeah. thank you so much for it's being here. We really here. appreciate thank it. Thank you. Short break. We'll be right back. Dear Coffee, you're fired. Your fancy foam and exotic blends are no match for my cockpit red leather seats and my zippy looks. I've got all the buzz now. Ciao, Camry. Lease a new 2019 Camry for $249 per month or get 0.9% APR financing for 60 months. Find yours at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. You have worked for a long time. There are so many decisions to make about your retirement. How much income do you need? How not to run out of money? Now is your chance, and you get one shot to get it right. Attend Merkel Retirement Planning's Passport to Retirement. We will discuss how to create tax-free income, how to avoid the next market meltdown, and how to wring every dime out of Social Security. Your time is now. Classes fill quickly. Call or text today. Zero cost to attend. Do you worry about going to the dentist? Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call the number on your screen and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month. So call now and make going to the dentist carefree. Call 800-436-9021 to receive your free Carefree Dental Card information kit. Her ex entered her mom's home. I saw a shotgun. I said, why are you doing this? I thought, okay, I'm dead. He went to prison, but his family, his mother, is petitioning for grandparent rights. Isn't going anywhere. I've never gotten an apology from her. She didn't do it. You're not normal. How selfish are you picking a fight with her when your mother's trying to get access back to her grandson? Next, Dr. Phil. Monday at 4 on Local 5. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. The United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, or USMCA, has not yet been approved by our federal government. It still must be ratified. If it's not, former U.S. Ag Secretary and former Governor of Iowa Tom Vilsack says it could be terrible for farmers. I spoke to him about his mission to educate people and get them to lobby their legislators. Uh, it's designed to modernize and refresh the current NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, that was entered into 23, 24 years ago. Uh, it's an incredibly important opportunity for American agriculture to continue to have open access to the Mexican market and for a number of commodities like dairy to have additional access to a Canadian market that's been closed. So for American agriculture, for the food and agriculture industry, uh, and for the jobs connected to the industry, it's a very important agreement and it's currently uh, in the process of ratification. Uh, and it's an elaborate process which requires the administration to submit language to Congress and then Congress has a certain period of time to decide yes or no, up or down. Uh, the administration has not yet submitted the language. Uh, I think the hope is it gets done relatively soon and the Congress votes on it relatively soon. Why do you believe the administration has not submitted the language? I think they're waiting for signals from leadership in both the House and the Senate that there are adequate sufficient votes to get it passed. Trade agreements are always difficult. Um, they are in some cases hundreds, in some cases thousands of pages long, so there's always places where if you want to be 
against the trade agreements, you can find aspects of it that are not particularly uh, helpful. Uh, but you have to look at the agreement in total. Uh, and from a total perspective, it's an improvement on NAFTA. NAFTA has worked well uh, for American agriculture, and so there's a continuation of hope for continu continuation of the benefits of NAFTA through a refreshed and revised MC USMCA. At this point in time, do you think that it will pass? Well, I think it will. Uh, uh, you know, uh, trade agreements are very difficult to get done, but at the end of the day, they usually do get passed because people take a look at where things are and ask themselves, is this an improvement over where things are? And clearly this is, agreement is an improvement over NAFTA. There are labor provisions, environmental provisions uh, in the agreement that strengthen uh, NAFTA, uh, go beyond NAFTA, if you will. Uh, there are obviously additional market opportunities that are created for American agriculture, uh, which are not currently in NAFTA. So, there, so if you look at the agreement in total, you see there are benefits uh, that can accrue. Uh, for the dairy industry, for example, it's roughly 220 million additional dollars of sales that we believe will take place each year because of this agreement if it's ratified. So what happens if it's not? Well, then the president has a choice and a decision to make whether he continues to allow the United States to be part of NAFTA or whether he makes the decision to essentially pull out of that agreement. Which he said he would likely do. Well, if he does that, then that would be very devastating to American agriculture because it would create a series of barriers to that Mexican market that right now is barrier-free. Mm -hmm. And it would make it m more difficult for us to sell product uh, to for what is, for many commodities, their number one volume market. Uh, certainly for dairy, it would make it incredibly difficult. Why should everyday Iowans really care about what's happening with of course the tariffs in China, but also the USMCA? It's a great question. Um, let me put it a couple of different ways. Okay. Uh, the food and agriculture industry that we're talking about in terms of these trade agreements either directly or indirectly employs 43 million people, which is 28 percent of the workforce of the United States. So many people's jobs are connected. They may not even be aware that they are connected directly to trade. So to the extent that you make trade easier or better or more available, then it helps to support jobs. Export-related jobs end up paying more in the marketplace, roughly 18 percent more. So they're good paying jobs that are potentially at risk. There's obviously the issue of farm income, which is obvious. Um, 30 percent of all f farm products are basically exported. 20 percent of all farm income is related to export. So if you reduce the capacity to export, you're reducing the capacity to uh, get to, to sell. Uh, product, which means that surpluses get created, which lowers prices, which makes it harder for farmers to survive. So there's one aspect of it, the economic aspect of it. The tariffs also have an impact on consumers. Uh, it's estimated that the tariffs that have been currently assessed uh, by, uh, in retaliation to things that the United States have done, ha is costing the average American family roughly $450, million, uh, $450 a year. Uh, that's probably going to double uh, if this situation with China continues uh, to perhaps as much as $800 a year. That's more than the tax cut uh, that they received a couple of years ago. So it basically negates the tax cut, makes it a little bit more expensive to buy groceries, a little bit more expensive to buy items that you would get uh, at, uh, at stores. And finally, it may limit choice. Uh, the, the reality is we are blessed in this country with incredible choices. When we go into grocery stores, when we go into department stores, when we go uh, online, we have this amazing array of things we can buy. Well, we have in part that amazing array and that competition for our, our, our consuming dollar because of trade. So whether your job is connected to it or your income is connected to it or whether you're concerned about your family budget or whether you like the idea that you have multiple choices, trade does have an impact on all three of those. President Trump said this week it's up to Nancy Pelosi to whip the votes to pass the agreement. Mexico's legislature ratified the agreement Wednesday. We'll take another break. You're watching This Week in Iowa. Adventureland's rides, shows, and attractions, including the Phoenix. Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. Our new spinning roller coaster coming in June. Fun for the whole family. Two great parks, all for one low price. Open daily at 10 a.m. in Des Moines. Honda was named the 2019 Best Overall Brand and Best Value Brand by Kelly Blue Book. So when you buy a Honda, you're getting an amazing vehicle for an amazing value. 
more amazing than Toyota, Ford, and Subaru. Come into your local dealership today and get a great deal on an amazing Honda. My friend, if you've ever considered getting a walk-in tub, I'm so excited to introduce you to Safe Step Walk-In Tub's all-new shower package. For a limited time, when you purchase a Safe Step Walk-In Tub, they'll upgrade your order to include a free shower package. You heard me. That's an $800 value free. You can now just conveniently shower in your new walk-in tub. The luxurious rainfall shower head is adjustable for your height all the way to seven feet. Now you can finally enjoy the best of both worlds with the therapeutic benefits of a warm, soothing bath that can help increase mobility, relieve pain, boost energy, and improve sleep. Or take a safe, refreshing shower all in one amazing product. Please call now and get your free shower package because you deserve it. Call 1-800-345-1494 for your free shower package. Offers for a limited time, so please call now. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Welcome back. We are joined now by Eddie Morrow, a Democrat running for Senator Joni Ernst's seat. So to get started, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, tell us, why do you want to be a senator? Um, well, Sabrina, I think that our, uh, our government remains broken. Uh, and I think the, the United States Senate and, and the United States House in particular are underperforming tremendously. And we need some real leadership uh, in the United States Senate in this particular seat um, to try to change the direction we're on in this country. So what have you been doing since you announced your run? Uh, I've been traveling around the state, around the country. So I've been already to 40 plus counties talking to, to Iowans of all kinds, um, listening to them, sharing my story and my background, why I think I would make a, a strong United States Senator, and, and hearing from them about the things that concern them. And now you've attempted to run for office. You ran for District 3 in the last cycle unsuccessfully. Why try again? Um, we learned a lot of lessons. We're battle tested. So, you know, we, we were, uh, came in second place out of the seven candidates who were running in that seat. Uh, Cindy Axney uh, wins that race and becomes our United States Congresswoman. Um, and right after that, a lot of people thought that we ran a very solid campaign and, and encouraged me to stay in the game. And, um, and I agreed with them. I think uh, I, I have a good message. I think I got a good background. I think I'd be a strong uh, a public servant um, for the people of Iowa. And, and uh, um, I like to go uh, have an opportunity to go demonstrate that. Of course, after you got through, get through the Democratic primary, then you have to go up against Senator Joni Ernst. So what makes you think that you can beat the incumbent? Well, I think my background, uh, Sabrina, my, my background in education and coaching, my background in building a business, uh, most importantly, my background of 25 years of, of service and organizing um, uh, here in central Iowa, around the, around the state, around the world, actually. Um, helping people, uh, demonstrating that I can organize people, that I can focus people on ideas, uh, that I can bring people together to go, to go fight for a cause when they don't know they have the courage to do so. Um, to bring people together to build consensus when they don't agree, which are all things that should be happening in the U.S. Senate today that are not happening. So I, I think I bring an awful lot to the table that, uh, that, that others don't have, especially Ms. Ernst. What do you believe is the number one issue facing Iowans right now? Mm. So there's a lot. Uh, I guess if you, if you want to say one, and right now it's dysfunction between our U.S. Uh, in our U.S. Congress and our United States Senate. Um, and because of that, we can't uh, address the, the important issues of the day, which is health care, uh, um, economic security, uh, good public education in our rural communities, uh, addressing our climate and environment, which are impacting our farmers today and, and, um, uh, and, 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 our, and our lives and the future of, 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 our, of our country. So there's, there's a lot of them out there, not one, but it kind of starts with we need a functioning uh, Senate, we need a functioning Congress. We're missing that tremendously. Um, until we get the right people in mind, uh, in line, or in those positions to, to help that function as it should, um, then we're going to struggle with those issues I just brought up. It takes a lot of money to run in a Senate race, though, and especially when you're running against someone like Senator Joni Ernst, who had this insane national backing six years ago. So how do you continue to have enough money to r run a race against Senator Ernst? That's a great question. So, um, you know, Senator Ernst is a, is a good senator for special interest, for uh, big industry, um, for Koch brothers who support her very well. Um, and she'll have a lot of money because of, uh, of her allegiance to those, uh, those folks. 
Uh, my allegiance is to the people of the state of Iowa. I'm vowing to be a senator for the people of Iowa, to be a people senator. And if we go running out that message here in Iowa and around the country, um, we're finding people that, that want to change the dynamic of the U.S. Senate, that think that we, we need to have a Democrat Senate um, uh, and get to 51 in the U.S. Senate from Democrats. Well, we'll get good help from around the country and, and raise the money that we need to, to, to have to compete with her. You've made, been in the news a bit with, for some controversial comments made about um, the strength that it takes to be a veteran or to go to war or the strength that it takes to uh, be someone who runs for office or who participates in running um, in being a representative of the people of Iowa. Talk to me about your thoughts on those comments that you've made and if you feel like you maybe should have backtracked. Uh, I don't think they're controversial at all. Okay. Um, the, 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 the point of the, the fact of the matter is I was respecting Ms. Ernst's service to the na in the National Guard and to this country the same way I respect my father's service in the United States Navy, the same way I respect one of my uncles who served in Korea, the same way I respect uh, one of my good friends who uh, was in Vietnam 50 years ago and Iraq 12 years ago, and, and the same way of many students and athletes who I coached over the years that serve our country. So it has nothing to do with her service uh, to the country. Uh, it has to do with her service in the United States Senate, where she's lacked the courage to stand with the people of Iowa. She's lacked the courage to speak the truth um, when she's had opportunities to do that. Uh, she's lacked the, uh, the courage to stand up against her party when her party's been wrong. And we need uh, a senator that has the courage of, of his or her convictions um, to stand up for the people of Iowa first and foremost, and, and she's failed to do that. Andy Morrow, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your oh, time. Likewise. Thanks, Sabrina. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Why bother mastering something? Why hand-tune an audio system? Why include the most advanced active safety system in its class? Standard. Because when you want to create an entirely new feeling, the difference between excellence and mastery is all the difference in the world. The Lexus ES. Every curve, every innovation, every feeling. A product of mastery. Lease the 2019 ES350 for $379 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. You have worked for a long time. There are so many decisions to make about your retirement. How much income do you need? How not to run out of money? Now is your chance, and you get one shot to get it right. Attend Merkel Retirement Planning's Passport to Retirement. We will discuss how to create tax-free income, how to avoid the next market meltdown, and how to wring every dime out of Social Security. Your time is now. Classes fill quickly. Call or text today. Zero cost to attend. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain or knee pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace or knee brace covered by Medicare at little to absolutely no cost to you. Will you qualify for a Medicare-covered back brace or knee brace? There's only one way to find out. Call the Back and Knee Brace Center at 1-800-280-4260. And they may be putting your health at risk. It's strangling your eye. Then swab your cheek. You find out what you should and shouldn't eat. The doctors debate the DNA diet. Monday at 3 on Local 5. Thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. We want to thank all of our guests, Senator Brad Zahn, Tom Vilsack, Eddie Morrow, for coming on the show to share their views. You can stay up to date on what we're working on throughout the week on our This Week in Iowa page. Look for analysis on big stories and breaking political news that you need to know about. We hope to see you again next Sunday.